Alright guys, welcome back to another video of mine. So today is going to be an educational video, and wait, before you before you click off, okay, I will explain everything in depth and in step in step by step format, so don't click off yet. These tips will probably, most likely about 99.9% .9 boost your grade in getting an A star, A or A star grade in your A452 computing GCSE coursework, right? So I, I, I obtained A star with these um, tips as well as other students but these are what I personally used and I believe were the best methods possible. So I'm going to try something new now, I'm going to kind of like split it up into parts. So I'm going to talk about one part then skip to the next part and the next part. So hopefully this isn't too long and, you, and it helps you so yeah. Let's get into it. Alright, so the first bit you want to kind of get down is they love research, right? So I'm gonna put up a little, um, what's it called, a little image of what my coursework was, because A452 is, I believe, different for each school. So like, I was doing something related to the same sort of topic, but not the exact same questions. So for for, for example, A452 for me was this, which you can see now, and. We had different parts here, task 1, task 2, task 3, which I cannot still get out of my mind, which is still scarring me. So, the examiners love shit tons of research, so before every task, so task 1A, task 1B, task 1C, we want to put shit tons of research. So, for example, if, you wanna, if you're designing a flowchart, you want to say where you got the flowchart from uh, in your bibliography, but I put it at the top of the page, so they see it at first hand. And that kind of, I believe, just, you know, it, it makes it easier for them to see where you get the research from. And then write a bit about it in you know, italics or something like that. So I did that, and I believe it seemed to help because I got a good grade for it. Alright, next thing you want to do as well. So this is kind of over the top sort of thing, but like, well, it's not really over the top. So if you have bulky paragraphs, right, examiners, as, as bad as it is, and you know it's actually quite true. Examiners, uh, examiners, they tend to skim through your work. So they're not like, oh, let's read this in depth. This guy has, this person has probably done so much, put so much effort into the work. I can't wait to see it. No, they want to go out. They want to have a good time. They don't want to mark your bullshit work, right? So to make it easier for them and to make it more, you know, like less intense, label stuff. Not label stuff, but like. Make your work presentable and clear and easy to read, right? So if you have bulky paragraphs, maybe highlight the main points in in bold. So like, if you're talking about something, highlight in bold or or bullet points are perfect because examiners are lazy cunts. Honestly, I think they are. I pre I'm pretty sure that's what my old teacher said. But yeah, they're pretty much lazy cunts that don't want to mark your work, but they do it. And another thing, adding on to the same sort of you know structural technique is add some color. I added some color to my work and it seemed to go pretty well and um, yeah so adding some color will add to the sort of you know make the sense of understanding and increases efficiency overall so that's that's another point to add a another thing I'd say to do is well you don't really need to do this for a 52 mainly a 53 but it would help go on sites called code Academy or any programming Python tutorials, right, on YouTube, Code Academy, because in A452, there's one little sort of code you got to fix, for me anyway, it might be the same thing for you, but you might want to fix, uh, you might be told to fix some uh, bit of code, so in order to do so, it's not that hard really, it's, it, it took me like two minutes, because it was honestly the easiest shit ever, it was like adding one line of code and, and editing one line of code, which was really easy, and you just do that and it's pretty simple but for a 453 on the other hand that's gonna take some in not hardcore coding but like you want to know a bit the like uh, the basics and a bit of ad advanced techniques such as like um ord and chr well if you do the same one as me then you know what i'm talking about but yeah um so other than that that's pretty much what you need research clear information and structured detail uh, learn a bit of Python, you know, like, 
do oh, oh and if your school's not doing python if it's something else then do something else by all means do java whatever they tell you but just learn that programming language but they do like a lot of research fourthly something that you want to include are, are dry run tables um flow charts and pseudocode pseudocode anything any algorithm to explain what you're doing so either flow charts or pseudocode or a dry run or and i think a dry run table something different yeah, you just want a dry run table for each task. So, yeah, and that kind of allows the examiner to see, hey, this guy has done some background research. He's done. He he knows how the code works. He knows what outputs that uh, the code will generate. He knows what how the code will work. He knows the variables and what would happen to the variables, therefore altering the um, the overall output. So. If they know that, they're like, oh, this this guy's pretty cool. And then you could, like, highlight them and, like, make it, make it all fancy. Make it eye-catching so they don't have to, like, search for it. it it's just, like, make it pr make primary colors, bold, whatever you want. Just make it noticeable, but not ugly. you got to make it nice, professional, but in a professional sort of standard. And, yeah. So, my teacher, he, and he told us to do all of these stuff, like, adding in, um dollar dry run tables then at the end he told us to take them away then, uh, then other than after that he told us to add some more dry run tables which was really really confusing but you know I, we just did it and it worked out fine um so yeah you just want to like have nice structure to your code and just maybe add some like you know your own bit of your own unique twist so like maybe uh your own font your own sort of like structural format your own layout basically make it different to all your peers so i mean i, I couldn't really do that because more my peers were like we, we were helping each other out they helped me a lot i helped them a lot it was very it was quite cool fifthly you want to try to converse with your peers even though that seems boring as fuck actually it wasn't boring for me it was very exciting but you just pair with them but get launch a skype group talk to them Talk about work and like maybe for one hour after after a gaming session, just say hey, you want to do some coursework? Just do some coursework with them. That helped me quite a bit as well. And um, just like if you work at the coursework together, which I did rarely with them, but you know it, it worked. And like we worked to through tasks to do together, helped each other on code and stuff like that, which was very nice. All right, finally, this is the main one I use. The main, the main one. Take your home. Uh, there. Get your work, learn what you have to do in class, right? Because we, our teacher didn't really tell us what to do. He just said, do your work, which was kind of, you know, yeah. But I mean, it, it helped us in the, like to uh, de develop our independent skills. But so we, I was in class. I didn't do shit in class. I, I took my stuff home and I worked at home because it's my own workspace and stuff and like that. And it kind of helped me just like in my own little space. And I could do what I want, listen to music, wear what comfy clothes. So I believe if you're in in your environment, comfy and shit, you do better. But if you do not own a computer at home or laptop or whatever, by all means, go to the library or go, or sit with the friends. But like, I normally joked around with them, like in class, talked about the work mainly, just gaining information, then going home and establishing that information onto Word and done. So that's that's what I did to obtain my A star grade. So. If this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up. I know it's long, but just listen to it, because honestly, it took me some. It took me a while to do this, and like I thought, hopefully sharing it with you guys may help you if you're doing computing. So yeah, and if you want to um, do uh, for me to make another video on A453, which is quite different but similar but different in a way, um, give it give it a thumbs up. Just tell me in the comments if you want A453. I doubt many of you are watching, but if you are, just, you know, just, yeah, comment something. So, yeah, that's me done. Hopefully this video helped. I like talking about it. I actually cut out a lot of bits because I kept on coughing, which was fucking annoying. I have a fucking messed up throat. But other than that, hope it helped. Give it a like if you liked it. Give it a dislike if you liked it, if you disliked it. And that's me done. So, yeah, take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.